In the upcoming three minutes we'll discuss an introduction to autonomic drugs, and the journey of acetylcholine from synthesis to degradation. Drugs affecting the autonomic nervous system are divided into two groups according to the type of neuron involved in their mechanism of action. The cholinergic drugs, which act on receptors that are activated by acetylcholine, and the adrenergic drugs, which act on receptors stimulated by noradrenaline or adrenaline. Cholinergic and adrenergic drugs act by either stimulating or blocking receptors of the ANS. Cholinergic drugs that stimulate the receptors are called parasympathomimetics. And the ones that block the receptors are called parasympathylytics. Adrenergic drugs that stimulate the receptors are called sympathomimetics. And the ones that block the receptors are called sympathylytics. From the previous lecture we already know that cholinergic neurons are located in the autonomic ganglia of both parasympathetic and sympathetic, and the postganglionic fibers of the parasympathetic division, the postganglionic sympathetic division of sweat glands, and the preganglionic fibers terminating in the adrenal medulla. In addition, cholinergic neurons innervate the muscles of the somatic system and also play an important role in the central nervous system. Now let's discuss the neurotransmission at cholinergic neurons, or as I'm calling, acetylcholine journey. This journey involves synthesis of acetylcholine, storage, release and binding to receptors, degradation and recycling of acetylcholine. Choline, is a compound that carries a positive charge, so it cannot diffuse through the membrane of the neuron. So. It needs a transporter to deliver it to the cytoplasm of the cholinergic neuron. And that is done by an energy-dependent carrier system that co-transports sodium. The uptake of choline is the rate-limiting step in acetylcholine synthesis. Then, choline acetyltransferase catalyzes the reaction of choline with acetylcoenzyme A to form acetylcholine. Then acetylcholine is packaged and stored into presynaptic vesicles. As we discussed before in synaptic transmission video, when an action potential arrive to the nerve ending, voltage-sensitive calcium channels on the presynaptic membrane open, causing an increase in the concentration of intracellular calcium. Elevated calcium levels promote the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the cell membrane and the release of their contents into the synaptic space. Then acetylcholine diffuses across the synaptic space and binds to postsynaptic receptors on the target cell. The postsynaptic cholinergic receptors on the surface of the effector organs are divided into two classes, muscarinic and nicotinic. Binding to a receptor leads to a biologic response within the cell. Then this action is rapidly terminated, because acetylcholine esterase enzyme cleaves acetylcholine to choline and acetate in the synaptic cleft. Choline may be recaptured and reused, and the process is repeated over and over. This is the acetylcholine journey. I hope that was useful and entertaining for you. Download the PDF for this lecture from the link in the description. Subscribe and wait for the next lectures.